Okay, guys, so I want to um, give you a couple of options for um, creating uh, your screen capture videos. So one way to do this would be to go to um, TechSmith, who make a product called Camtasia, and I'm putting these links into um, the blog post, so you'll be able to just click those and do a, a, a free trial. So I think you get 30 days and you could most likely set up another account with a different email and do another 30 days and that get you through. And if you're using Camtasia, <coughs> uh, you see a screen like this. Um, when you hit the record button, which is down there, obviously I've already pressed that, so I can't press it again. Um, it will bring up a screen where you can choose the microphone and systems audio. And you just need to click on that systems audio button uh, uh, where there's a question mark and it will just say do you want to install this and you click yes and it will sort it out for you then with that you can just basically open it up and hit uh, microphone and systems audio put some headphones on and then uh, open up Ableton and, and talk to the computer and then export the video okay so that's one way um, and it's a pretty easy and clean way to do things. <clears throat> if you don't want to do that way, uh, you can use QuickTime, like I said, but there's a bit of a workaround. So the problem with QuickTime, when you open that up to do a new screen recording, is that it won't allow you to record systems audio. So when you choose um, the input, it'll give you the option like uh, you probably won't see Soundflower or Pro Tools Aggregate if you don't have Pro Tools, but you'll see internal microphone and line and that's it. And there's no option to record the system's audio. You could do that with the internal microphone and just um, uh, leave the headphones unplugged and pick up your laptop speakers with your laptop mic and it will work, it'll just sound crappy. So that's the second option. And <clears throat> The third option, if you want to use QuickTime, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now, is to install what's called Soundflower. So again, I've, I'll, I'll be posting the link to, to this page, but once you're there, go down and download the installer. Yeah, so that'll end up here. And you'll double click that and install that as usual. That will then give your computer um, the possibility to send up to 64 channels of internal audio so you could potentially you could send audio from one audio software to another and so on okay so I've already done that and I'll show you how you can set this up so even if you don't necessarily want to do this for a screen capture it's still going to be kind of a handy thing to know how to do so um, what you'll first need to do is create an aggregate in your audio MIDI setup. So if you go um, Shift Command A, you can have a look in your Applications folder. And if you go right down to Utilities, and then you find Audio MIDI Setup, you can muck around with the Audio MIDI Setup. So let's have a look here. Okay, so at the moment I've got the options of built-in microphone, built-in input, built-in output, and Soundflower because I've installed that. And I've also got the Pro Tools aggregate, which means I can combine mm, combinations of inputs and outputs. So I'm just going to, if, if you don't have Pro Tools aggregate, you can easily create your own one by clicking the plus button here and create an aggregate device. <clears throat> and then you just click the boxes you want to use. So I'm going to click built-in microphone and built-in output and also sound flower. Uh, in fact, I don't yeah, I'll, I'll leave all three of them <coughs> ticked. And this means I can choose this option as my I.O. for Ableton, uh, and that'll allow me to do what I want to do. So if I want to, I can name this. I can call it AM, AG, or whatever, and, and then I recognize it. Okay, so that's already, that's now set up. And by the way, I've, I've dragged this sort of utility app into my um, my dock so I can get to it easy. Radio. so um, you would need to 
open up QuickTime, file, new, new screen, recording, and then choose the input for this to be Soundflower 2 channel. Okay, and then you hit record and off you go. I'm not going to do that because I'm in another software to do my screen recording at the moment. Um, but that's the setup that you need. So I can just get out of QuickTime now. I don't need that. <coughs> and in Ableton, you will want to have a look at your preferences. And you can leave the input device as the built-in microphone. And the output device, in fact, I'm going to have to just quit and reopen Ableton because I, I created a new aggregate which is not showing up. That's all right. Now, <coughs> um, built-in microphone and my output, I'm going to choose the new aggregate that I created. And I just want to check that the output, that all of these are ticked or highlighted. So they are. Click OK. Now, it's a bit of a roundabout way to do things, but it will it will work. Um, in the aggregate, it turns out that the um, that the Soundflower output is actually output three and four, right? So I'm going to change my master out to three and four, which means that QuickTime should pick that audio up. Um, and I'm going to leave the Q output, which is kind of like um, you know if you're DJing. This would be your headphone output. This would be your, your main output, pretty much. Um, and now I've got the option to um, swap my solo buttons to Q buttons. Okay, and that's going to be interesting in a moment. So because I have two different outputs, I now have the option to turn these solo buttons into Q buttons. Right, so to get your voice, the talking, as well as the audio that you're, you know, going to be wanting to demonstrate in Ableton. This is just an audio clip, or you could have um, an operator on a MIDI track or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, you just need to make it so you can hear your voice and also the <coughs> the system's audio. So if we hit input monitor, um, you can see my voice bouncing up and down in Ableton and because that's obviously going to the master that's also going to be being picked up by QuickTime so that means yes we can hear um, our commentary in QuickTime so I, I'll be able to hear your explanations about what you're doing and then when you want to show me something in terms of audio you can do audio and that will also be going into QuickTime. Now you'll notice that we can't hear that and that's because our master output set to three and four. We're not using that. So, but because we've got one and two set up as well, we can use that for our headphones. And there you go. Okay. So if you need to be able to hear what you're doing, you know, so that you can um, give me an example of how you change the sound in Operator, you need to click what was the solo button, which is now the Q button. And then you can say, well, here's me changing the release time of my operator. Okay, and you can turn that on and off. Um, you probably don't want to hear yourself talking because it's distracting, but I can put that in there, and now it's doubled up. All right, so three options. One is to use um, Camtasia, just download the demo and, and do it that way and record uh, microphone and systems audio. That's a pretty easy way to do it. Um, the second way is to do the crappy audio um, using QuickTime, just doing it with the microphone and, and leaving your headphones unplugged. And the third way is to do the tricky workaround using Soundflower and setting up an aggregate device and then using that as your output in Ableton, which gives you four outputs instead of just two. All right, I hope that helps. Um, and yeah, I look forward to watching your videos. See ya.